thought it might be useful also to show a quick demo video here of how to get details like this. So this is a relatively simple piece of geometry here. If I just turn on solo and hit uh, shift D to go out of dynamic subdivision mode, you can see it's not that complicated. I probably just basically retopped this pattern in here approximately. You can see it's a little bit warbly. And that would have been sitting on top of uh, some scaffolding geo, just some, some Dynamesh stuff. Uh, and then just using ZModeler, basic basic polygon operations, extrudes and, and whatever. And these are these little extra dot lines here just mean those edges are creased so that when I do go into dynamic subdivision, it'll go ahead and preserve those corners a little bit. So once you've done this, like the geometry is pretty simple. As soon as you start adding extra stuff in, you know, this is a little whatever. That could probably get polished a little bit, a little bit uh, um, warbly there in, in the in how it's calculating that uh, that high poly dynamic subdivision. So as soon as you go in and start adding cuts or whatever to support this kind of stuff, it gets really hairy, right? You start uh, running into all kinds of opportunities for the, the subdivision to, to get weird stuff in it. So this is created using what is called a uh, live Boolean here in ZBrush. And then if I turn live Boolean off, you can see it's actually just a separate piece of geometry, which in itself is also very simple. If I show you what that looks like, it's just a, a, little, a little extrusion here and uh, with a, a little detail modeled into it, that the, the combination of these two gives a very, a very good looking result. And if I've got everything actually selected properly, it works a lot better. All right, so how do we build this? I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this out for you fairly quickly, something similar. So I've already inserted a Z-sphere here and I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of approximately recreate this. So I'm going to, I've got my own stuff down here that I've pulled out, but I'll use the regular menus. We've got topology. So this is only available if you've got a Z-sphere selected in your subtool menu. And I'm gonna hit edit topology. And you wanna turn live boolean off for this, otherwise it'll, uh, it won't render the, uh, the new geometry very cleanly. So we'll just kind of come over and whatever, something like this. And what I want is a very thin strip. I find that if you have very small details on otherwise large op uh, objects, it, uh, or otherwise simple objects, it makes it feel like the object is more detailed and, and potentially larger than it is. And in order to get a consistently thin line, what I'm gonna do is wildly overshoot it and then uh, use a, a trick with Z modeler to get that geometry. So I've got this now. If I hit solo, we can see kind of what I did there. And um, I'm actually gonna take this back to the default settings. By default, I think this is set to 256. And what you get is something that looks terrible like this. I don't know why this is the default behavior, but it is. So in adaptive skin, you wanna take the Dynamesh resolution slider and drop it to zero. And I'm just tapping the A key to hop between uh, the, uh, the preview and the retop. This is just a preview. You can actually work on it, but if, if you hit A, you go back to your geo. And I'm gonna leave my density at one. I think also the density by default is at two, and you can see what that does is it'll it'll like try to add subdivisions, which just messes everything up. So just make sure you set your Dynamesh resolution to zero and your density uh, to one, and you will get a nice simple piece of geo that directly reflects what you asked for with your retopology. So now I need to hit this Make Poly Mesh 3D, and I'm going to hop back over to my my uh, main subtool here, my main tool and we'll hit insert and then go and grab that piece of geometry. I'm gonna go back to the Z-sphere, tap the A key and just delete topology. So we can reuse that if we want. So what I wanna do now is create a very thin uh, strip here. So I'm gonna hop over to the Z modeler brush, which you can get to by tapping the B key and then probably Z and whatever, there it is, right? You figure it out. And what I wanna use here, if I mouse over an edge and I hold the space bar down, I'm gonna get an edge specific set of options. Same thing with the face and same thing with the point. So it's sort of context uh, specific there. And what I want to do for my edge is use the insert edge loop there. Whoops, I did not mean to do that. And once you do this, you can actually dial in a very, very thin edge that does not require you to have perfectly, you know, created this using your topology option. So that's pretty convenient. Now I just need to delete these other pieces here. So with my select lasso, 
uh, option here. I'm going to hold Control and Shift just to show you where this is. You may see something that looks like Select Rect. There's a few other options here in this menu, and one of them is Select Lasso. If I select the edge here, it'll isolate the loop. It'll basically hide whatever that is. And then I can just go over to uh, this uh, Delete Hidden, which I think for everybody else, got way too many menus open here, is going to be the Modified Topology Delete Hidden. So now this is all I'm left with, and I can turn Solo on to kind of get a sense for where I am sitting on that surface. And it might be sunk down a little bit too far here, but uh, we can uh, we can uh, um, correct for that in just a moment. Uh, before I do, though, I'm seeing a little bit of an inconsistency in the thickness based on the position of this corner, so I'm just going to grab... Actually, I'll leave that one alone. I'm going to grab the Move Brush, and we'll just kind of do a little scoot there. Just try to even that out a little bit. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just close enough. All right, so back to the Z Modeler brush, and I am going to, I want to Q mesh it or extrude it. Um, Q mesh is basically a, a fancier version of extrude. It's kind of like a smart extrude. I want to make sure I'm extruding the entire poly group, and we'll just go up a little bit, and we'll just go down a little bit. So now I'm going to be sort of intersecting, uh, should be fairly cleanly intersecting that surface, and it looks like I need at least one more edge here. So I'm going to mask that edge, tap the W key, and I like to use for these kinds of operations the transpose. Uh, by default you're going to get this, but I like to orient my transpose line along specific edges, and it'll, if you just kind of click on one point, it'll automatically snap to that edge. So I think that's pretty convenient. Turn solo off again for a second. I'm going to hold uh, shift so that I can snap. Oops, I need to mask remask that if it wasn't already masked. Um, so we're using W here. And that way I can just make sure that I'm kind of breaking the surface. And now what I want to do is add some creasing. So we'll go to our crease, edge loop complete. I definitely want to crease that edge. And these edges here, probably this one. And then I'm going to hold a, a tap a Control W to put everything in one poly group. And with the Z modeler selected, if I hold Alt and click those faces, I can put these guys on their own little poly groups. And then in crease, I can just hit crease PG, which means crease poly group. So I basically get a crease around there. And then I want to uh, hit D to activate my dynamic subdivision and I can see I need to do a few more edges here so we'll crease the top edge there okay so at this point it doesn't look any different we are getting some some dynamic subdivisions but uh, and you can kind of see that on this piece here but because everything is is so creased it's hard to tell exactly what's going on so if I go to my again I've got my stuff pulled out here but I'm trying to do this in a way that's going to be meaningful for you so I want to reduce my crease level to around three what that means is when I apply my dynamic subdivisions, the creasing will be respected for the first three subdivisions. And then after that, when I apply my smooth subdivisions, it'll ignore anything after, it'll ignore the creases after the, the, the third subdivision. So you can see here with four uh, uh, smooth subdivisions, I'm starting to get this kind of nice, clean, smooth transition there, right? So like if it's at three, it doesn't look any different, but as soon as I go to four, we start to get that effect. And you've got to make sure your crease level is at three. If I wanted something softer, you can drop it to two, and you can see how this is automatically kind of recalculating on the fly there, which is just really, really nice. Okay, so this is what we're getting now, and if I run over and turn on the um, subtract option in my Booleans, and then I turn on my Boolean, let me make sure I've got it visible. There we go. You can see we're getting a nice cut automatically already. And that's uh, that's cool, but we can actually add a little bit more interest to this piece of geometry. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add uh, an edge loop here and a little edge loop over here. And then um, Control W to put everything in one poly group. Um, hold Alt and just click on these faces. Again, we're using the Z model brush. And now I can use Extrude to pull them out. And I'm going to go to slide on the edge and then slide on this, this little point here. And we can begin to 
make ourselves like a little tab or something if you wanted to come in and, and like pop a panel off or something. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this so that it's approximating something that is planar so that we get a clean result in our dynamic subdivision. So I'll hit crease polygroup again and then I'll grab a couple of these but I'm going to need to come in and I want to make sure I'm just going to do the edge not the entire edge loop. Whoops. And that way I can make sure that I'm capturing everything without going overboard. Probably won't hurt to throw these on there as well. So with that detail added in, uh, if we come back over and uh, turn on that primary piece of geometry and turn on live boolean, now you can see we're getting something that is kind of cool, very simple to add in there, adds a lot of detail, and doesn't mess up how our dynamic subdivision is calculating on this, uh, this larger, larger piece here. So now if I was really happy with that and I decided I wanted to make this piece of geometry for real, um, so right now this is all non-destructive, right? I can turn light boolean off and make some edits, but if I wanted to kind of calculate this so that I could bake it or whatever, because um, right now it would definitely would not would not bake. Um, in the uh, tool menu, or sub-tool menu, under booleans, you just want to turn on um, uh, DS divisions, which means it'll, it'll preserve your dynamic subdivisions, and then just make boolean mesh. And it'll go through and kind of calculate all the stuff. And what you will end up with is a, another sub-tool here which is just that geometry. And if I turn on my polyframe, you can see now everything is all very, very um, dense. And this is all kind of uh, baked in. So there's no longer like turning my live Boolean off doesn't, uh, doesn't change anything because this is all just a single piece of geometry and it is ready for retopping or baking or whatever that you, uh, you might want to do with it. So that is a, a simple trick to help you add additional detail to your geometry using live Boolean.